So let's have a quick review on how to create a diode model. Um, so as we saw with our curve tracer video, we were able to get this uh, diode curve. And in order to extract the ideality factor and the reverse saturation current, we need to take the log of it and see where it's a straight line. So let's edit this axis. And we can see that right in here, it's straight. So that's where it's pretty much purely acting like the uh, ideal diode equation in forward bias. Here is where the reverse bias is. And here it just really hasn't turned on yet. So what we need to do is just plot this region. So we'll come down which I've already identified as being between 1.7 and one, around 1 1.8 volts. So between 1.7. Um, now, in order to, to do this, you just can't put it on logarithmic scale. You actually have to take the natural log of it. So I'm going to plot just a small portion of this curve. Right again, actually. Let's just zoom out and find where I put it. Uh, I guess so, right here. So it's it's not perfect, a uh, perfect straight line. You can see a little bend here, a little bend here, a little bend there. And, you know, some diode models actually have parallel diodes with different ideality factors. But we're just trying to create a quick and dirty model. And what I did is I just added, I uh, formatted the trend line. I selected linear and set the display. So right here is the slope. And here's the... Uh, the intercept and you can see that's a relatively good fit and so um, all I need to do is this is the slope and so that slope really equals one over the ideality factor and the thermal voltage so I solve for that and I'll get an ideality factor and that gives me the intercept which I believe I did higher up oh right over to the side so this is where I scale by the uh, threshold voltage then I take one over and yeah n is bigger than two that can happen uh, especially with diodes or uh, yeah especially with LEDs right then the x-intercept is really IO I just t take the exponential of it now how do I find RS it's not the best way, but what I've done is I've zoomed in just on the high voltage end. And you're going to see this, looking at it, it's this jagged curve. And that is really because the, uh, I, the um, that voltage difference has some error in it. And I think I'm hitting the limits of resolution of the scope. So it's bouncing back and forth that's not really what's happening but really all you got to do is put a linear fit through it and it'll just average that noise right out so I take the slope of that and which is 0 0.0693 and I just take one over it and that gives me the series resistance of about 14.43 ohms now I can put this into LT spice and create my own model and this is a DC model there's no capacitances where I have IS 1.54 to the 16 the ideality factor and then I have the series resistance and here's the circuit that um, that I created and let's just see how well it did I'll create the graph again so I'm gonna plot 
you know, there's V1. In this case, I use a sine wave instead of a ramp. All right. Now, what uh, we can just mimic what's going on. And really, we want V2 divided by 56. That gives us, now we should be in current. We don't really want to plot V1. And if I go to the x-axis and just do V1-2, which is really V at node 1 minus V at node 2, I get my diode curve. Now, yeah, it looks like it's giving a little bit more current than uh, what is actually measured. But if we zoom in to where... we want to be that's not quite right let's try that again 10 mil all right it's it's pretty close all right and what I found is that the, um, haven't been able to find a, a diode model for these these ones that we use um, that come with LT spice and so the closest one was the Nietzsche one, but it it's quite uh, different. So really, you just include this in a simulation, and there, we've created our own model. Um, that's it.